Okay, let's continue on with parts B, C, D, and E here. Um, so we want the work that's been done by the applied force um, as it goes from uh, you know, 0 to 0 0.113 meters displacement. So it starts here at 0. We have the applied force, the constant applied force. At the end, we've displaced a distance x, which for me, I mean, my numbers we found was 0 0.113 meters. So um, the way we do that simply is we've already solved for x, right? We know this applied force. So we just multiply them together. Um, the force is acting in the same direction as um, as our displacement. So really we just take our, our you know the work done to get from one to state one to state two or the work done by FA, our applied force to get from state one to state two, since FA is constant and pointing in the same direction, it's just FA times X. Easy peasy. So let's go um, see if that's correct or if I've completely made a fool of myself. And so this should be uh, let's see 3.1 newtons times um, 0 0.113 meters. So 3.1 times 0 0.113 is going to be 0 0.35 joules. 0 0.35 joules and lo and behold I'm correct. I can still teach physics. Great. Okay, what is the work that's been done on the block by the spring force? Now here's the thing. Um, we, we, we did this, you know, there's one version of the problem we did, or the one version we did of part A, you treated the work um, done by the spring force as just work and and then the applied force work was work and those two works had to add up to zero because it starts and stops with zero kinetic energy. Here we use potential energy to represent the spring force. But this isn't hard because the work done, if we, even if we've done it this way, the work done by the spring going from one to two is going to be equal to the change in the spring's uh, potential energy between one and two. Uh, in fact, this is just the definition of potential energy. So this is going to equal uh, the spring potential energy at point one minus the spring potential energy at point two. Uh, this is just the definition. This is how we define potential energy, in fact, as we say it. It's a function we set up so that if you want to know the work done by this force to go from point one to point two, or state one to state two, really, then you just take the potential energy at state one, subtract potential energy at state two, and boom, there you go. That's the work done by the spring. So um, that's pretty easy. So let's see, zero is, let's see, you potential energy for the spring at, at state one is zero. Okay, we had that over here. Potential energy for the spring at state two is one half kx squared, which means the total work done by the spring is just going to equal negative one half kx squared. And I already know my x, I solved for that. So let's pull this stuff up and power to our calculator. And so negative one half kx squared, so negative 0 0.5. I oh, don't want to do answer it, let's see. Nice 0 0.5 times k was 55 newtons per meter times 0 0.113 squared. And that should give us negative 0 0.351 joules, which is coincidentally about the same as this. Negative 0 0.35 joules. Now this is not, actually it's not a coincidence, because if you think about it, um, what's the you know, what's the total work done on the block between here where it starts and then when it comes to a stop um, out here? Well, it's kinetic energy at the start is zero, kinetic energy at the end is zero, so the total work done on this block by the applied force plus the spring has to equal zero. Um, in fact, that's what we found out, um, or that's what we did when we did it using the first method. That's, that's, we knew that. I mean, we used that to solve our problem. So obviously then, if if you find the total of these two forces is zero, going out to here, and then you find that, well, the applied force did this much work, then the spring must have done the opposite work to keep the total, you know, make the total energy of the system at the end zero. So there you go. Now, during the block's displacement, we want to find the block's position when its kinetic energy is a maximum. So what I want to do for that is instead of using um, state two as being this thing, I'm just going to, uh, in fact, let's see, erase some of these things, and, and instead stay, say that, oops, sorry, okay, say the state 2 is where velocity is at its maximum, so I'm going to say just do that where I say velocity equals um, v max. So now what's my displacement x? Well, um, so kinetic energy 
is going to equal one half m times v max squared. Uh, spring potential energy. And I'm going to call this um, x. I'm going to call x now a position where you reach v max. Is going to equal one half um, k x squared, which means total mechanical energy is going to equal um, one half m v max squared uh, plus one half kx squared. Okay, so it means the work done to get from position one to position two, the work done by the supplied force is going to equal the increase in kinetic energy plus the increase in potential energy. Um, and since it started at zero for both of those, it's pretty easy. The work done from one to two is just this, you know, mechanical energy of point two. So one half m v max squared plus one half k x squared, and that work is of course um, going to be the f the applied force times x. So that's going to mean F A times x equals one half m v max squared plus one half k x squared. Now this is um, we're not quite sure how this is going to lead to the answer. Maybe it's not. Um, so I'm going to do this where and say where its kinetic energy is a maximum. This is its maximum kinetic energy, right? So I'm going to say um, one half m v max squared equals um, f a times x minus one half k x squared. So we want to maximize the value of this. Now, if we're doing calculus stuff, um, that's all great because we can just do um, derivatives and take the derivative with respect to x and find what x is for that, and that'll be all hunky dory. Uh, the problem is that we're we're not doing calculus. We don't know calculus for this class, so we need to find a way to um, do this other than um, other than than this way. So what we can look at is we can say uh, actually instead of doing this. In fact, you know what? This was completely the wrong way to do it. What I'm going to say is that it's going through. So I'm going to plot a little, do a little plot of x versus kinetic energy of the block. And we're going to say it starts at zero, and then it gets up to here, and then it goes down. Okay. And so remember, this point here is um, we already found that this was um, x equals two f a over k. Remember that. And this here was x equals zero, of course. And so we want to find, let's see, um, what is this maximum potential? We want to find block's position when it's kinetic energy's maximum and the value of that maximum energy. So where we're going with this is um, the maximum kinetic energy is right here, which is when the, sl the slope of this is zero. But what, what else is zero there? Um, so what I want to think about is the rate at which energy is changing. It's always moving to the right here. Um, yeah, the block is moving to the right here. What's the rate at which energy is changing? Well, um, the rate at which energy changes, you know, over time, for a small period of time, is called power. Remember that? And power, you'll recall, um, has units of watts, and it's, you know, delta, it's, it's the rate of change of energy. So if the energy reaches a maximum, the kinetic energy reaches a maximum, that means um, at this point, you must have zero power because it's got positive power while it's increasing and then negative power while the kinetic energy is decreasing right so at this point power equals zero and power one way to to calculate power is to calculate the force acting on this thing times the velocity so for this to be zero so the you know the force the net force acting on this thing um which is going to be fa um and you know going one way and then the spring force going the other way remember because you got applied force going that way, we've got spring force going this way. So what we want, and I'm going to call this F net times V, we want power, this to equal zero, remember? Power is zero, um, and that's F net times V, which means for this to be true, either velocity needs to be zero, which it's not here because it's still cruising through, or F net equals zero. So we actually need to find the point where F net equals zero to find where its kinetic energy is maximum. So I'm going to do it down here, say F net equals zero, which means that F A plus F S equals zero. This is the applied force plus the spring force must equal zero for the net force to be zero, right? Because these are the two forces acting on it. So 
FA and then FS, you'll recall, is negative KX. So FA equals, or sorry, FA minus KX equals zero, which means X equals FA over K. And let's see if we can plug that in and get the answer. So FA is uh, 3.1 newtons divided by 55 is going to give us 0 0.56 meters. Let's see, 0 0.56, uh, sorry, 0 0.056, right? My mistake, 0 0.056 meters. And that is correct. So finally, um, we want to find the value of its maximum kinetic energy, um, which is, uh, let's see, so we want to find what that maximum kinetic energy is. That's kind of tricky. We'd have to find the area under this curve, but that's not easy. So um, what we can do actually is say um, what is between, uh, let's see, between the, the um, this, this point here, um, what is the change, what is the, the total mechanical energy of the system and what's the work done? So the work done between point one and two um, by the applied force. Um, so right here, this, this, remember we're still talking about the same situation, same state one and state two. State one is the beginning. State two is when it's going at this maximum speed or maximum kinetic energy, okay? So we know this X here now, we know K. Um, we don't know what this V max is yet. But um, we know that this is uh, applied force times x. So now we know that um, pulling these two equations together, we get, or taking this equation really and doing a substitution, you know, so we know we're going from 1 to 2, okay? So we're going from 1 to 2, done by the applied force, is going to be Fa times x, okay? Um, and that's going to equal maximum kinetic energy plus one-half kx squared. And so that means, uh, I'm just going to have to scroll this down a little. So, whoops, down, there we go. So that means maximum kinetic energy, ek max, is going to equal um, fa applied force times x. Let me write that a little neater. Applied force times x minus one-half k x squared, and that should give us the maximum kinetic energy value. So let's see if that works. Whoops, sorry, wrong. Wait a minute, there we go. Okay, so Fa times x, that's our 3.1 newtons times our 0 0.0564, I'm gonna go just one more digit just to be safe, um, Fax minus one half 0 0.5 times k times 0 0.0564 squared and that is going to equal 0 0.0874 joules or they asked for millijoules so we're actually looking at 87.4 millijoules and boy i hope this is right wow got it right unbelievable so there you go that's how we do problem one